You might not know his name, but you definitely are familiar with his music. Hi guys, welcome to this edition of Connected with Kelly, and today we are getting to know Shy Carter. Now, shy has been a songwriter for years. He wrote Stuck Like Glue for Sugarland. he wrote God Whispers Your Name for Keith Urban, and he wrote the massive hit with Charlie Puth, One Call Away. You're singing it in your head right now, right? Me too. So now Shy is stepping out as an artist and he has a song out called Good Love. So let's get connected with Shy Carter. Shy Carter, listen, I, it's so funny because I'm thinking, I know I've met you. I know it was probably at a number one party. Your name is just synonymous with so many things around here. And then when I hear this song and I see you stepping out as an artist, I'm like, why has this taken so long? <laughs> yeah. Why? I, first of all, back up. You, you're from Memphis, right? So started in Memphis. And, and how did you get into songwriting? How did it all start? Oh, well, I, I remember my, my uncle gave me a keyboard when I was probably like 11 years old or something, 10, 11. And and I just I just they had these little pre-made beats on there and I would just make these I would just make these little songs to it. And, you know, I just I just loved it. I was really into sports, but I, that that keyboard just got me and I, I would just be in my room already singing like boys to men songs and stuff and pretending like I had my little microphone and I was on stage, you know, so. And then I just I got into a, a, a little group that we were singing talent shows and stuff and. I think by the time I was um, about 16, I, I I ran into somebody who had a little studio and we started re record. I recorded my first song and wrote it and stuff. And I just, I just loved it so much. I just never, never stopped. Well, and it's interesting too. I want to hear the journey on getting into songwriting with so many different people. I mean, when you run down the list, Shy, like you are the chameleon, man. You, you're with Charlie Puth. You're with Megan Trainer. You're doing Latin and country. And how how did all of this come together? Because I feel like you really are so fluid in all the things that you're working in. Yeah, man. I love I love music. It just doesn't matter, you know. Like and everything is is new, you know. If you if you go over here and you go over there, like okay, this is this is new because I've been over here, you know. Now I can go over here. And it's just it, 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 you know, invigorates me. Um, so, and, and I, and I've been around a lot of different kind of people, you know, I come from a mixed background of just, uh, had to, I had to, I always also didn't really fit in in a lot of places either. So, you know, I just, I just had to, I had to adapt to where, to wherever I was, you know? So I think that really helped me as I, as I got older to just be able to adapt to the, to the situations, you know? I want to talk to you about that because in, in seeing like some of the things that you've done in the past and, and knowing like the massive hit that you have with Charlie Puth, you go into that with one mindset, right? You've got that hat on and then you're like, oh wait, okay, we're going to go over here. We're going to do some country and you put a different hat on. Is that kind of like code switching, you know, where you're, you, you can read the room and you talk a, a certain way, you write a certain way with pop, you write a certain way with Latin, you write a certain way with country. Is it different every place or is it always the same and it just fits into that mold? Well, there's, there's definitely different, uh, different elements. There's, you, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do exactly the same thing in, in every room, but most of it. I think is fluid and and would work. Like I I feel like I could have been in Nashville and wrote one call away with some writers here. I feel like it's the same kind of for me, it's 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 just a melody, it's chords, and it's a lyric. I'm only one call away. Sometimes a pop lyric or something is it doesn't have to be quite as deep as a country lyric. Um, so I think, I think in country music, you dig, you dig deeper into the lyrics, um, f for the most part, but you know, maybe, maybe, maybe one call away might be a little too simple for the country. I I'm only one call away. Superman got nothing on me. I'm one call away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but, yeah, but are you kidding? It's amazing. Well, think about stuck like glue, stuck like glue was like, you know, that was the catchiest man. I remember when it came out, I was like, this is so catchy. It's in my head. Holy cow. And then to see it blow up the way that it did. Was that your first foray into country music? 
Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yeah. What was that like when you come out and it becomes this huge, massive hit where you just like, wait a minute, I need, I, need, I think I need to pay attention to what's happening over here in the country genre. Yeah, well, I, I was already really, really paying uh, really close attention to it. Um, I had been coming to Nashville. I was living in Atlanta. I was had been coming to Nashville all the time. And I was I was infatuated with it. I was hearing like Zach Brown band. They had this song, Whatever It Is. You know, whatever it comes out, I love you. She, you know, she got whatever it is. And, and, and that song was such a, a a beautiful, like, love song to me. I love the guitars and the, and, and just, the, I'm like, man, I love this music. Um, I had I was listening to Billy Currington. Like, pe- I, I think People Are Crazy was already out. And, um, um, like, Must Be Doing Something Right. And, like, songs that he had. I was like, man, these these songs are, like, soulful, like, Songs like I grew up on, like my mom listening to Tracy Chapman and Van Morrison, and, you know, Lionel Richie, and things that things that were just like major and had folk elements, but were just cross cross genres like that kind of, you know. Um, so I was paying a lot of attention to it, and I just happened to be in L.A. Uh, writing with a guy, Kevin Griffin, and we were just writing. And when as we were writing. I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just getting on the mic singing melodies. And I didn't, and and I just wanted to make a different kind of beat. So I just started beating on the guitar and making sounds with my mouth. So I was just being totally creative, not thinking about anything. And uh and he said, This would be great for Sugarland. I was like, what? So we sent it to them and then we finished it together. And it just I was just so over the moon because I really wanted to get into country music and who would have thought like being out there in LA just messing around that that would be the one. You oh, oh, stuck like blue. You and me, baby, we're stuck like blue. All roads lead to Nashville. All roads <laughs> lead to Nashville. Okay, so why is the timing perfect now for you to come and put your stamp out and say, I want I I'm a songwriter. I am a, you know, I love country. I love this music, but I want to be an artist. Well, it must be God's timing, you know? <laughs> it must be because I've been asking him, Lord, please let me do this music <laughs> for, for the longest. I would have told you it was time back then. I would have, you know, people, even even when I did like stuck like we they're like, why did you give that to somebody? You should have saying that yourself. I'm like, nah, I gotta, I gotta make a way. I gotta make a way in. Like people love my demo of, of a lot of these songs. And and but also it's just like in the past 10 years, in those 10 years, like music has changed so much genres have blended so much um and i've i've gotten more seasoned i've gotten um uh, like i'm making my best music now you know i was able to i was able to make some hits over these years but i'm making my best music now it's like i i'm i'm in my my best place as a person you know as a father i got two little kids and that just changed my world and I just feel like I can connect on a, on a whole nother level and bring and like I'm really focused. I was a little bit I was a little bit more wild and I'm real focused now. <laughs> you know what though? Here's what I love too because you realize it had this happen ten years ago. Number one, it wouldn't be as sweet, but number two, it probably wouldn't feel right. You know, it, it's all about that timing and stepping out and making sure that you're in that right time. So I want to hear about Good Love. Give me some insight about this song and, and where it all came from. Sure. Um, well, my brother, my brother has been, have been living with me out here in the country. And I got a great friend, James Slater. And we met a guy named Carlo. And uh, <clears throat> so we wanted to we wanted to work with Carlo. And uh, so my brother set it up and he's like, hey, James and Carla are coming out here. So I'm like, all right, cool. And we went in the studio um, and they already, like my brother had a beat going and uh, my brother also did a God Whispered Your Name with me. So like, I, I'm really glad that, you know, he came down here from Cali. He, he went to Cali with me way back then. And I, and I said, hey, I'm back in Tennessee. Come down here, help me out. Let's do this together. And uh, so it, it's, it's really great because he's involved uh, with, with it too. But they already had like, you know, James is amazing piano player. I got this beautiful piano out here and Carla was on a guitar. So between the three of them, I walked in the room already and it was just like the 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 feeling of the song was there. There was no lyrics. There was really no melody. My brother had a little melody and I was like, wow. And we just kind of sat there for a while. I said, I, I like to let it just like marinate and, and 
and we sat there all day until the nighttime. Um, just and we we talked about life and we talked about like losing people. Carlo had lost his fiance. James had just lost his brother. We had a lot of heartbreak, a lot of pain between all of us, and we just talked about life and um and those just started coming out into into lyrics. I'm like, oh, you know, we should, we could say that. We just talk about something real. And we said, let's say that. Let's say that. And then and then you know, just the melodies start coming out, and then it just ended up being good love and. And I, I was like, you know, this should be, this should be powerful. You know, all we go name it is good love. <laughs> that's, that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty simple. But you know, sometimes you gotta have, you gotta have a little, like, I, like, like we said, those other songs are pretty, are pretty simple too. And so it's that balance of saying something powerful, but also <laughs> having it simple. Good love, good love. need good love in 2021 after what we just went through good love is perfect for what yes, we need man. that yes. is perfect so i have to ask you know being so successful in the songwriting realm were you scared to be an artist did this scare you no <laughs> no there's, there's a lot of things that scare me but i've just been chasing this i've really been chasing it a long time and i i've been somewhat patient people didn't really know that it was just uh such a such an important thing for me uh because I didn't want it, I didn't want to come off like that but I was always always working at it trying to trying to make make a way for myself that's why you'll see like me f actually featured on some songs like like with Keith Urban featuring Shy Carter and Megan Trainer featuring Shy and I, even on Charlie Puth's album. So I was always trying to be like, hey, look at me. I'm an artist over here too. I'm trying to do, <laughs> I'm trying to do it. But now I'm just like so uh I'm just really over the moon that I have this label that's uh a, a, such a phenomenal label with all these amazing people from the top all the way um to support me. So I'm just I'm just ready to go. I don't have any kind of uh, reservations about doing it. Do you have any advice that's been given to you from some of your friends? I know you've got so many friends in the industry. Has anybody stepped up and said, hey, okay, so now you're going to do this artist thing. This is the one thing you need to know. You know, like maybe like working out with Tim McGraw or something and I'm not, I can't keep up. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep up. And he's like, hey man, you want to be a star? You got to get it. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't be falling out on stage and stuff, man, you know. <laughs> Listen, nobody can keep up with Tim. I mean, Tim's trainer can't keep up with Tim. He's crazy. <laughs> Holy cow. Did you really work out with him? Is that? Yeah, I, a few I, times. I, yeah. What was that like? Did you feel like you were going to just die? Yeah, I was like, man, I'm living like I'm dying right here, man. I tell you. <laughs> no, <laughs> nah, uh, I mean, you know, he took, he, he he went easy on me. He went easy on me. Uh but it's 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 long. Yeah. It's long. He might work out for like three hours or something. And I just do what I can do. If I got to stop for a second, I just have to stop, you know? <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Holy cow. That's amazing. That is amazing. So stepping out into 2021, what does it look like for you? I know this is such a weird, strange territory. So what are the plans? Do you have plans going into this year? Um we just yeah we just getting more music together We're gonna put out some more music and hit this radio hard and whatever anybody calls me to do I'll be there to do it if I gotta you know if I gotta go somewhere we don't have too many shows lined up but we got a couple things and I'm just I'm just available and ready to go and I'm in the studio uh, writing new songs and recording new songs and I'm just, I'm just ready to go. I feel like it's going to be a great year, even though it's already started off kind of wild, you know? Yeah, I, I know. I get it. Okay. Last question. What do the kids think about this song? Do they run around singing it? You know, my daughter, my daughter, she, she gravitates to it a lot more. She's like a little, uh, she just turned two. And so like, it's been around, this song has been around ever for at least like a year or so when she was real little and I used to just play it back to back and she 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 would push the button on the phone to play it again 
or like I'm just holding her like going to sleep and she she said again or so she would say something to say that she wanted to hear it again you know but my son he could care less well I'll be on the Nashville Christmas parade or wherever on TV with with with, with Tim McGraw on 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 TV or somewhere, he's just like, I'm like, look, daddy's on TV, man. He don't care at all. <laughs> no, I, I listen. It doesn't get better. Mine's 11. She's still not impressed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Shai. It was so good to talk to you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Guys, Shy Carter, make sure that you're listening for this song, Good Love, and there's more to come from him, he says, this year. And make sure that you are connected with us. You can do that by subscribing below. Hit that bell. We'll let you know when we've got new episodes coming out. And until then, make sure that you're staying connected with all of the people and things you love the most. Bye.